Problem 14. Nicholas is planning to send a package to his friend Anton, who is a stamp collector. To pay for his postage, Nicholas would like to cover the package with a large number of stamps. Suppose that he has a collection of 5 cent stamps, 10 cent stamps, and 25 cent stamps, with exactly 20 of each type. So I'll represent this by times 20. So with this information, what is the greatest number of stamps? So we want to optimize the number of stamps. Notice this, notice this phrase. Nicholas can use it, make exactly $7.10 in post-its. Well, $7.10 is the same thing as 710 cents. Now, the reason why I converted to cents is because we're considering post-its in the units of cents. So the units must match, and we have 710 cents. Now, how do we optimize it? Well, if we were to write this out in general equation, that's 5x plus 10y plus 25z is equal to 710. Notice here that the x, y, and z represent the, um, the number of stamps that we ultimately use for each post-it uh, or each stamp of each monetary value. So how do you go about optimizing this kind of question? Well, typically when you do with optimization questions, you always want to go from the least to greatest, especially when you maximize the number of terms that you have. The reason why for this is because let's say optimize 25 first. 25 is a, has, a, has the largest number of cents that it has, right? 25 is greater than 10 and 5. So the more, the more stamps that I use up with, with the monetary value of 25 cents, the less amount of cents that I, I would have remaining to distribute among 5 and 10 cent stamps. If I have less cents to distribute among these two types of stamps, then I have effectively minimized X and Y, and I want to maximize X and Y. So if I want to maximize X and Y, I want to first maximize the stamps with the least monetary value first, and go upwards. That's the idea here. So to do this, let's first maximize 5X. <coughs> if I want to maximize 5X, I need to maximize X. Well, the maximum number of X can be is X is equal to 20. So when X is equal to 20, then I use up 100 cents. So 10Y plus 25Z must give me 610 cents. Now with this, let's maximize 10Y. <coughs> If I want to maximize 10y, then y becomes 20, and if y is equal to 20, then 25z must equal to 410. But here we ran into a problem, because 25 is not evenly divisible by 410. The way you know whether 25 is divisible by a number is you check the last two terms and see if that is a multiple of 25. And since 10 is not a multiple of 25, we obviously know that this is not possible. So how do we go about changing this question? Well, that means that we cannot use a maximum number of nickels and dimes. So how do we do this? Well, 410, what is the closest number that's divisible by 25? Remember, we cannot subtract, because if we subtract, then we, did, we, did, we subtract that from the total number of cents that we have left remaining, and that wouldn't make logical sense. So we can only increase the cents where the increase comes from giving nickels and dimes to the overall total. Well, 425, right? That is the closest number that's divisible by 25. Remember, the last two numbers must be a multiple of 25. And the smallest multiple of 25 is when 25 is multiplied by 1. So 4 must end with 25 to be divisible by 25. So what is 425 divided by 25? Well, that's equal to 125. So 425 divided by 25. We put a 1. to 25. 175. 4 plus 3 is 7. So put a 7. 175. And we have 0. So that means this would equal 17. So we can use 17 cents, prov 17 25 cent post-its, provided that I gain an additional 15 cents to reach the 425 cent total. So how do I use the least amount of coins to create this amount? Well, I can do this by subtracting 1 from the nickel amount to get 19, and subtracting 1 from y to get 19 to give me Right, a combined of 5 plus 10 cents, which is 15. And since this optimizes every single cent step by step, we can be sure that our answer is correct. So what is 19 plus 19 plus 17? Well, that's 38 plus 17, and that's 55, bringing you to answer choice E.